Hi, Cooper Glover, 1972, back with a video, another video, part 65, um, second, oh wait, no, not second, third box, first part. Um, so, I've been, I've been doing the first and second box videos just in one day, I've been doing it today on Thursday. Um, I don't think I'm going to put them on YouTube at least until f tomorrow, on Friday or maybe Saturday. Or maybe Sunday. I'm trying to trying to trying to get through the other boxes as well. I don't know. It's already twelve thirty two in the morning, so I don't know how fast how how, fa how quickly I will get through all these. But uh, I'm gonna uh, do a little right now. See what happens. Anyways, um, this is a documentary about a photographer who um, captured what, what was happening in the '60s. It's called Eye in the Sixties. Um, he's a, he was a life photographer, and uh, he was an insider to the Kennedy and Shriver families, Peace Corps. He became the he became the free first Peace Corps photographer. Um, he witnessed the young Bob Dylan, the Beatles, Arthur Ashe, Barbara Walters, Joni Mitchell, Judy Collins. Um, 1969 Woodstock Film Festival, I guess he was there. Um, yeah, so so he, he signed this. I, I, I don't remember if I just said that or not, but I remember he's kind of shot sometimes. This is a ho horror movie. I think I've shown a... Again, some of these videos I'm going to, these movies I'm showing you um, right now, I might have shown you these, I think I did show you these like a few months back because I, I, I got a, I, I bought a whole bunch of uh, movies all at the same time. Um, anyways, so it's a whole horror movie, Sarah Michelle Gellar in The Grudge, here it's good. I think somebody told me on uh, YouTube that it was a good movie. Maybe it was great, 1951, Mike. I think he told me. I think it was him. Last Man Standing, Bruce Willis. I think it's based on uh, Yojimbo, which I have, which means bodyguard in Japanese. And there's been uh, several adaptations of uh, Yojimbo. There's been in the Dollars trilogy by Leone with Clint Eastwood, there was. For Fistful of Dallas, which was the remake of Yojimbo, then he had for which I didn't like that much. For Fistful of Dollars, I didn't like that, but I liked for a few dollars more and The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. I think those are great films. But anyways, I think this is this film is an adaptation of Yojimbo, and I think Sharon Stone and Quick and the Dead was also an adaptation of Yojimbo as well. And I think there's another one, another film that was an adaptation of Yojimbo. This I know I showed in a previous video. It just has Mario Bob as the cinematographer on it. Um, the Day of the Sky Exploded. I guess it's a disaster film or something. Haven't even opened up the wrapping. I just bought it because Mario Bob did the cinematography. This I showed, Enemy at the Gates. It's about snipers. One sniper is played by Jude Law, who's a Russian in World War II. And he's fighting another sniper played by Ed Harris, who's a Nazi. And Bob Hoskins plays, um, um, what's his name, Khrushchev. Um, and it's during World War II, and it's a really good movie. I, I enjoy it. Um, I guess it doesn't really have much in the... Well, it has some cast and crew interviews and behind-the-scenes feature. But I guess it has little special features. Very little. Um... Yeah, so I mean, in this film, uh, they, as in real life, they forced um, Rush, the Russian people to. Uh, you either fought against the Nazis, or if you if you declined to engage in um, fighting them, um, they'd shoot you. So, and it's and you can see that in the film. Uh, this is Alien vs. Predator Requiem. 
This looks like a fun, interesting movie to watch. I think um, Sigourney Weaver was, wasn't too, wasn't a fan of having the alien films go like on their own without humans or whatever. I don't know. There's something like that. Because the first four alien films she was in, and I think they, then the alien films sort of went off on their own, you know, path, I guess. I don't know the whole story of that. Uh, these are just video cases that I have films in, but or I had films in, and now that I just there's a video store going out of business, and I bought their movies. Some of them were some of them they were selling, but they also had the cases that went with them, and I don't have anything in the cases. I just kept the cases. That's why I just didn't show those. Just empty cases. This is Van Helsing with Hugh Jackman, Hugh Jackman and Kate Beckinsale again. Kate Beckinsale, you know, she she was in Underworld. This has got some special features. You get to explore Castle Dracula's Castle, three hundred and sixty guided tour, bringing the monsters to life. Um, oh, Industrial Light Magic, huh? Worked on this, you know, George Lucas's company. You get to see the actor's perspective on the on the film with miniature cameras on set. Legend of Van Helsing about the character through film history. Commentary with director Stephen Summers, Bob Duxay, Richard Ruxburg, Schuler Hensley, and Willem Kempt. Those names, Stephen Summers, I think I mentioned him before. Maybe I didn't. But Bob Duxay, I, I saw that name in a previous video that I did. Uh, just the name on the on the on the disc. You know, there's no, it's a slipcase, but it's just just the same stuff. And I, you know, I'm not really showing the insides of these because because I I, I don't think they really have much on them. Just the advertisement. You know, they're, they're not like Criterion's. Oh, I guess they have toys in here, Van Helsing toys. Right there. We meant right there. So, next up, have, uh, I don't know, did Dario Argento direct this? Uh, no, it was directed by a person named Michel Sauve, but it was produced one of the producers was Dario Argento. It's called The Church. It's a horror movie, and uh, I guess it takes place in medieval Europe, maybe? I don't know. I haven't really watched it. It's co-written by Dario Argento, too. So, yeah. Music of Goblin. It's got his daughter in it, Asia Argento. T Tomas Arana from Gladiators in it. Um... Uh, yeah, so I don't know what it's about. I just think I got it for a cheap price, or maybe just got free. Bulletproof Monk with Chow Yun Fat. I showed this one, uh, Sean Williams. Um, I showed this one uh, in in my haul that I collected a whole bunch of movies. This is one I collected. It's got co commentary all. Leave it seen commentaries by the editor. Um, five behind the scenes featurettes. Dow of Monk. The Monk Unrobed. Audio commentary by the writers. One by the director and producer Charles Rove. Roven and Douglas Siegel. Behind the scenes photo gallery. So. And this next film I haven't seen quite some time. I don't know if I've ever watched a DVD of it. I've watched a VHS copy I had for quite some time, uh, for quite a few viewings. Uh, it's a really good movie, and of course it, you know, how could it? It's one of the great movies, Casablanca. Um, I think it's loaded with more special features, well, than the tape. The tape had a documentary I think that came with it. Um, oh, it's got two commentaries. 
the, the first commentaries by Re Roger Ebert, he only did three commentaries during his life. Casablanca, Citizen Kane, and Dark City, all, all of which I, I, I happen to have. Um, the second commentary is by film historian Rudy Belmer, and it's got an introduction by Lauren Dacal, who was, um, I, th I think Humphrey Bogart was married before her, but he, but she, she, they, they did marry. Um, there's a Lauren Bacall host, you must remember this, a tribute to Casablanca, a spellbinding backstage tour. Bacall and Bogart features the award-winning actresses, candid and moving reminiscences reminiscences about her husband's life and career, newly discovered additional scenes and outtakes, homage cartoon Carrot Blanca staring Bugs Bunny and the Looney Tunes gang premiere episode Who Holds Tomorrow from the 1955 TV series adaptation of Casablanca, Screen Guild Players radio production of Casablanca featuring the film's three build top, three top build stars scoring session out Outtakes Gallery, Production History Gallery, includes photos, press materials, studio correspondence, memorabilia, and more. So, great movie, great lines. And the thing about this movie was, at this time in Hollywood, the films were just being churned out. You know, they were just being... Um, they, they were just being... Um, it was, a, it was a huge industry. It was sort of like uh, people making cars. Um, you know, on, a, on an assembly line, they they just made tons of movies um, every month, every week. It was just a regular industry. Um, and um, I think they, they, they really don't make as many... They make a lot of movies these days, but compared to them, they, um, they made tons of movies. Maybe they made like 50 a week or something. So Casablanca was just one of those movies. And uh, it manages to stand the test of time, and, and it, it it transcended the time here that it was in. It, it was, but it, but it wasn't made. It wasn't destined. They didn't destine it to become a you know one of the great classic movies of all time. They didn't say we're going to make a film that's going to be timeless. It was just one of those films. They they um, they just made like the other ones. And, uh, you know, you just see a lot of great um, incidents happen, joined together, that made that film work. You know, like uh, the the actors, I think Humphrey Bogart's career skyrocketed after this one, after he played Rick in Casablanca. And he had great dialogue by Phil and Julius Epstein, um, great camera work. Um, who did the cinematography on this? And... Um, I don't know if it says. Mick Steiner did the score. So, you know, you, you got a lot of great Claude, Claude Rains and Conrad Veidt, Sidney Greenstreet, Peter Lorre. You know, you got a great cast. So it was just one of those films that managed to be become a, an immortal movie. Um, this movie, um, I, I think there's an, a, this is a remake I, I, I've heard this is good. Um, I guess it has two different versions. It says it includes alternate theatrical version with controversial ending. It's Will Smith and I Am Legend. So. I guess it's with zombies and Last Man on Earth, I guess. I mean, I, um, in, in the case of I Am Legend... Uh, the original story was written by Richard Matheson, I believe, who was one of the writers for The Twilight Zone. And uh, anyways, at some point I'll watch this. Next is uh, another Will Smith movie, I, Robot. A friend of mine says this is good. I haven't watched it yet. The robots look kind of silly looking, but we'll see. I'll still watch it, but... So, okay, so now, uh, okay, so now we got, 
I, I thought I owned a movie on, on The Incredible Hulk, and I was right. Um, but it wasn't directed by Ang Lee. But it does have Edward Norton in it, which I was right on. Liv Tyler, Tim Roth, William Hurt, The Incredible Hulk. At some point I'll watch this. Um, it's got feature commentary, director Louis Lederer and Tim Roth, deleted scenes. I've heard that some of the Hulk movies are not that great. The, the way they're, the way the Hulk is is um, animated or, or how he moves around. Um, I don't know. Um, anyways, next up, I I had no idea I owned this until I looked. Um, Requiem for a Dream, Darren Aronofsky. You know, a film I really really thought buying. I don't know. I, I thought of buying Fargo. Every time I spend up to $2,500 on my Barnes & Noble credit card, they give me a $25 gift certificate to one of their stores or online store. Uh, I thought of buying Fargo. I think I, I, I'm, I'm going to get a new card, a new gift certificate soon. And um, I thought of getting Fargo, but, but then I, I've also considered getting Darinowski's, um Black Swan because I really enjoy that. Um but anyways, this is Requiem for a Dream. It's got commentary by the director. It's got commentary by direct, director of photography, Matthew Libetic. Uh, maybe he did maybe he did assassin, assassination of uh, Jesse James by the coward Robert Ford. I can't remember. The Making of Requiem for a Dream documentary. Deleted scenes with optional director commentary. Memories, dreams, and addictions. Ellen Bernstein interviews. Hubert Selby Jr., The Anatomy of a Scene, Theatrical Trailers and TV Spots, Cast and Crew Information, Production Notes. It's a pretty interesting movie. I haven't watched it in a little while. I didn't really understand Pi that well, but I think it was done on a fairly low budget. I think Pi was his first movie. What do you know? I showed the Blu-ray of The Patriot, and here's, here's, my other, here's another edition I have. Oh, and here, here we go. Here, here's all the behind-the-scenes stuff. Yeah, you got a commentary by Roland Emmerich and producer Dean Devlin. Visual effects, in, in, interactive featurette, battlefields featurette, the art of war, the true patriots featurette, conceptual art to film comparisons, deleted scenes with optical commentary by filmmakers, photo galleries. Um, I think I'll keep both of them though because they're different cuts. This is the this is the theatrical cut. Well, it's a special edition, but I think that means in the special features. Um, this this is the theatrical cut, I would say, and the and the other version is is an extended version. So I like to see different versions of the same movie, and 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 you know judge, you know see how they work against each other. This is another movie with Keanu Reeves in it. Um, again, it was cheap; it's three bucks. But um, I, I'd like—I I, I wanted to see it. I just haven't seen it yet. It's called Constantine. It's got 18 minutes of additional scenes, including alternate ending theatrical trailer. So, some of these say DVD ROM stuff, but you know, the DVD ROMs are no longer. Um, I don't think they're really part of the scene anymore, if you will. Gremlins. I think Joe Dante, well, Spielberg represented, uh, presented. I think, yeah, Joe Dante directed this. I have seen this movie a long time ago, like in the 80s. It's got a commentary by Joe Dante, Zach Allegan, Phoebe Cates, Dick Miller, and Howie Mandel. Second commentary by Dante, producer Michael Finnell. Special effects artist Chris Wallace, behind the scenes documentary, photo, storyboard gallery, cast crew film highlights, theatrical trailer. So. Next, um, film called Boogeyman. It's another horror film. Deleted scenes, alternate ending, multi part making a featurette. Visual effects, progressions, animatics, previews. 
don't really know anything about this. Just picked it up because cheap and looked interesting. Same here, the vertical limit. Three minute, three dollars. It's got Chris O'Donnell, Bill Paxton, who died recently, Scott Glenn. Sort of, sort of looks like cliffhanger in a way. I have cliffhangers, but it's on tape. Got a commentary by Martin Campbell and Lloyd Phillips. HBO Making a Special, Search and Rescue Tales, National Geographic's Channel, Quest for K2. I don't I don't think I saw this movie. Pretty sure I didn't. This is a copy of Run Lola Run, but it's it's not. You know, I don't know why it's like this. Um, well, I, I bought it at a library book sale. I had the soundtrack for quite some time, and now I have the well, I've had the movie for quite some time too. But anyways, Run Lola Run is a movie about a woman named Lola. Um, she's talking. She, she has three different scenarios happen um, during the movie. Her boyfriend uh, has to have a certain amount of money for this this gang guy, this this um, criminal, at a certain time, and she's got to figure out a way to get the money for him. And it basically has three different scenarios that happen. So that's what Run Lola Runs about. It sort of reminds, now that I think about it, it reminds me of um, of a Polish movie by Krzysztof Koslowski called Blind Chance about a man who is rushing to get on a train and three different scenarios that can happen to him um, if if he doesn't or if he does make the train. A friend of mine is borrowing that, so I'll have to show that a, a, another time. Um, I did show you the Saw movies in a previous video, and they were Blu-rays, but I, I think I'll keep these as well because they have a lot of special features on them, or some special features. Um, this is Saw 1. It's got an audio commentary by director James Wan, writer, actor Lee Wano. Music videos featuring, including an un exclusive unrated version, making of the music video. Sawed off, mini featurette, trailers, TV spots. Saw promotional art gallery. So. And then you got the, the, the sequel, Saw 2. So, audio commentary with director Darren Lynn Bowsman and actors Donnie Wahlberg and Beverly Mitchell. Jigsaw's Game. Bits and Pieces, The Props of Saw 2, The Traps of Saw 2. Storyboards and Conceptual Art Gallery. I know I'm sort of racing through these, but, but uh, I don't really... I don't really know. They don't. They don't. I don't know if they show a ton of stuff. What they're about, or well, they, they had descriptions on the back, but um, I'm sort of trying. Sort of trying to make some headway through this, and I, I don't want to bog down the video too much by describing all of these. Uh, now, this film it's called The Antichrist, and I mentioned that I had another film called The Antichrist, which, which was directed by Lars von Trier. That particular version by Lars von Trier is banned in France, I believe. It might be banned in a few other countries. Um, that, that's a criterion uh, that I have of that Antichrist. This is just um, another movie that goes by the same title. Um, I guess it's an Italian movie. The score um, is by Neo Morricone of this movie. Um, Directed by Alberto Di Martino. So it's one of, I guess it's like a, I don't know if it's giallo, but it's from the same camp, I guess, as the people. Well, I was going to say it's the same camp as Dario Argento, but he's not mentioned in here. But I guess it's it's, it's from that same time period. It's Anchor Bay DVD. I don't know. I found it at a, at a conven um, not a convenience store, um, a, a drugstore. Yeah, drugstore, and they're just selling it. I've decided to buy it. 
this is a, another one I got um, at the li library book sale, I believe. It's a documentary. I don't know if it has... No, yeah. I guess it's just one disc. It's a documentary about... Um, what's his name? Robert McNamara, I think his name is, who worked for Kennedy, who worked with Johnson. I don't know if he worked with Nixon. Um, no, just Kennedy and Johnson. And he was involved with the Vietnam War. Um, that's a fog of war. I think it was nominated for an Oscar. It's an Errol Morris film who did the Thin Blue Line, I believe, about a person that was convicted of a crime they were innocent of. And uh, he made a, history, a brief history of time for uh, about uh, Stephen Hawking. Next we have uh, Focus with William H. Macy and Laura Dern. Don't know really anything about this based on the novel by Arthur Miller. So we'll see what that's like. This next one I hear is really good. Roger Ebert really praised this movie. Uh, it's called The Three Burials of Milchitis Estrada. So Tommy Lee Jones. It's got a commentary with, with Tommy Lee Jones, Dwight Yoakam, and January Jones. January Jones was in um, Mad Men as uh, Betty Draper, I believe. Um, of course, Dwight Yoakam's a country singer. He's also he also was in Panic Room, and uh, Tommy Lee Jones d directed this movie as well. So um, again, I, I've got so many movies to watch, but they said I've, I've heard my friend watched this and he thought it was, was a pretty good movie. Next one's a documentary. Again, I purchased this at a sale. It was supposed to have two discs, but only came with one. Um, and disc two. It. The problem with this one, the corporation, the problem with this is I have disc two, and disc one has all the, basically is the movie. Uh, it has video interviews with the filmmakers, and Janine Garofalo interviews the writer, and two filmmaker audio commentaries, and I only have disc two, which has over five hours of additional footage of the corporation, so this is, I guess the word would be bum rap, like a Rip off that I got that. I, not really a rip off, but but I, I didn't get what I should have got. You know, I'm not really bitter about it or anything. It's just you know, I'd like to have the movie. If I buy the movie, if I bought the the case, I would expect that movie to be in there with it. Um, and I, I showed just not too many videos back, or, or not too long back, but um, I showed um, a documentary uh, that, that was called Ringers about Lord of the Rings fans. Well, I told you in that video that I did another one in one of my boxes about Lord of the Rings. And it's about Howard Shore creating Lord of the Rings Symphony, the composer's journey through Middle Earth. Hardshore is a great com composer. He's done some scores for Martin Scorsese, David Fincher. He did uh, Science of the Lands for um, um, Jonathan Demme. So, anyways, um, this should be interesting. So, uh, that's part one of, of uh, box three. And I think I'll stop it there with this video. Um, sorry, it's already 101 a.m. I don't know if I'm going to do another video or not. But uh, anyways, that's that's the end of this video. So I'll see you in the next one. Uh, if I don't record tonight, I'll record tomorrow. So thanks for watching. See you later.